What is happening guys? Welcome back to another episode of a Redbeard's Garage. We got the 79 F100 back in or in the garage for the first time. We got Aubrey putting on a jacket ready to climb up under it and change the oil. So we got it running on the very first video uh, and since then the only thing I've done is switched out the fuel filter and the fuel lines up top here and it started perfectly fine. But there was a bunch of junk in the tank. That fuel filter was solid crud after about not even a quarter of a tank. So we went ahead and swapped that out again and we have another one sitting over there to do it again. We'll just keep switching it out, you know, every tank of gas. But we've had a, we made a boo-boo and I'll show you what we've done. We was switching out the heater core lines to get the heater to work and a nipple broke off the block. So we'll show you that. That is the output from the block that goes to the heater core and the nipple just completely snapped off. So our problem with our heater core was this little vacuum controlled shutoff valve. So this shuts the antifreeze, antifreeze from going inside the heater core when the AC is on. That was bad. So we put a manual one. So we'll just open this in the wintertime, close it during the summer. So we just putting all new hoses on and that barb broke off. So we are going to drill and tap it out to put this brass boy in there. That's going to be a pain because a lot of stuff is in our way. So in the meantime, Aubrey is going to climb up under it. She's going to be super awkward on camera. Uh, she's going to climb up under it and change the oil for the first time. She's never changed the oil on anything, so it'll be a good learning experience. So let's do it. We got some... Uh, over here she's way down there uh so that big greasy pan that would be your transmission so it's in front up here oh yeah it's a front sump so the oil pan is kind of a pain to get to but we already got some leakage of some fluid from this puppy who knows what that's from but the the transmission looks like it's leaking a little bit so we'll get that pull it off later but for now we just need to drain this oil all right so she's got it broke loose it took a seven eight socket to break that puppy loose which is a huge oil drain bolt in my opinion it's stuck. which way am i going again oh, towards me did it cross fall up now it's stuck again what the heck okay i'm gonna need that thing again <laughs> longest oil change ever <laughs> nope other way flip the wrench There we go. That is not your way. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it gets stuck both ways. Mm -hmm. This sucks. Oh my god. Oh, I did it. Turn it. Hey, she oh. got it. Look at that rich golden oil. Or black. What right, color so. is it supposed to be? Well, that's about what you expect. So we'll let this drain and we'll do the oil filter next. So we got the oil drained and it didn't look horrible. How was it, Aubrey? Got the drain of the oil. Mm -hmm. It was gross. <laughs> but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, over. Old trucks are pretty easy. You know, now the most satisfying part is pouring in all that good old oil. So I've got the hoses pulled off i've got the new hoses on not cut the length though and i'm just trying to figure out how i'm going to put a barb in that puppy because it's going to be hard no matter what and someone's already bypassed the smog pump and uh we went ahead and pulled the hose off up here we're going to block that off they used to run to the little canister we're getting rid of all that junk uh and we also got to do a power steering return line which we have sitting right here uh it is leaking so we're going to put that on here in a few minutes and hopefully get that bar put in that's the biggest thing i need to go get a drill bit for a 3 8 uh mpt tap i don't have a drill bit big enough like i don't have the correct size for the tap so hopefully we'll get that tapped out really nicely and get that done that's the biggest thing several days later all right so the last you guys seen on the 79 we changed the oil and we had a problem where we broke the little barb off the uh off of the power steering pump now we went down to napa bought a new power steering pump we bought both hoses new so we're replacing everything we possibly can got the new power steering pump put on super easy it was just uh four bolts this is the tensioner and then you have three bolts down here that mount it so you loosen these three 
and then you can tighten this and it draws the power steering pump this way super easy both lines are new as you can see there and we have no leaks so that is finally fixed which is awesome then the next problem we was having of course this barb down here which i don't know if you guys can see but this hose this hose right here runs to it but we drilled that out to a quarter or sorry a half inch mpt and got that tapped and bought a barb from the parts store so the heater core is all hooked up now and then we bought a manual valve and got that shut off because it's winter time or summertime now so we don't need that so truck's been running okay we went through about six of these fuel filters and we finally flushed the tank and it's good now this one's a little dirty probably needs changed out one more time but uh it's working really good now next uh we're gonna do plugs plug wire distributor cap and rotor button and then daniel's gonna come over i don't know much about carbs i'm definitely not going to take my first motorcraft two barrel apart uh today so he's going to come and pull that carb off and uh completely rebuild it we bought a kit from napa so let's first start changing out the spark plugs and we're going to change out spark plug and the wire that goes with it and then we'll change out striver cap last and of course the uh <clears throat> the little end came off the spark plug wire i completely figured that would happen but again i expected it there we go So not horrible. I mean, of course, a little crusty, but not horrible. And the gap was uh, around about to right around uh, 44 thousandths. Has an uh, old original auto lot in it. Now I did ask for uh, Motorcraft plugs and they gave me auto lot. I don't know why, but they did. And I didn't check them and I'm already home. So this is what we're putting in it right now. Got it set at around. 44. Those boots are awful. Put them like a stupid, stupid design. They're going to be a real big pain back there, for sure. So we did all the firing stuff. We did spark plugs, stripper cap, rotor button, and uh, all that jazz and the spark plug wires. Uh, I found something pretty interesting when I took the distributor cap off. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. So look at that hole in the distributor. Something's melted it. And I've heard, and we got D Daddy Dan Dan the man here doing the, he's our uh, carb guy. D Daddy Dan the carb guy. <laughs> the carb guy, stinky old gas dude. Uh, <laughs> These intake manifolds on the 351 modifieds do not have coolant passages in them. So imagine how hot that fuel gets. Yeah. They say the intakes on these get hotter than a son of a gun. Good thinking, Ford. Preheat the fuel at nights in the intake manifold. Well, some people know that I'm a Chevy guy. Yeah. But I'll tell know. you that this is my favorite Ford engine. Oh, really? So you think I should keep it in here? I'd, I'd rather have this in that 460. In its heyday, like uh, when the NASCAR used to use these engines. Oh, really? And it competed with the uh, 426 Hemis and the uh, 454 Chevys in NASCAR. And it was a very competitive engine. They say a cam four barrel intake and headers uh, wakes these engines up like crazy. Yeah, they're, they, they wanna make power. And uh, the difference between this, if you look at this engine, you'll think, oh, it's a 351 Cleveland, but the, it's the 335 series. Mm -hmm. It's what this is based off of, the Cleveland and the M series. Yeah. The difference is, the only difference is, is the block. This one has a one inch taller deck surface. Would you make it a 400 if you rebuild it? If you could find a crank. That's all, really crank, really. Yeah, I mean, I'd put some better rods in it probably, but. Yeah, it uses, a, the 400 uses a four inch stroke and this is a three and a half, just like a Windsor. Oh, okay. This is gonna be, if I can find an intake, 
then we might just throw like what would you do 650 650 750 yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh so daniel's gonna pull this off then we'll take the camera inside and show him rebuilding it That's what I was afraid of. I'm trying to un undo the choke. It is operated by the exhaust. The exhaust heats the choke up, and of course, there's a little spring in there, and it actuates it, you know, like so. And the problem I'm having is the tube that transfers the exhaust heat to the choke is rusted, and it just broke. You should be able to make some out of some brake line, maybe. I've never made one before myself, but Seems like it'd be pretty easy. That's what broke. That's for the choke. But I do this just in case we might need a gasket or something. If you leave something loose like this, you can shake it and you'll break the gasket free and you're good selling. Like if you you're don't on a, snap a gasket in half and yeah. If you're on the side of the road, you can thank me later. Who this plug up to? This plugged up there. Oh, okay. I don't know if you need this. Mm -hmm. I know that if it was an air cord Volkswagen, you'd absolutely need it. Yeah. Because on a Volkswagen, when that throttle snaps back, that slows it down. And mm -hmm. without it, it would the, the Volkswagen would just die. Oh, okay. Yours, uh, it seems like it's not even working. It's not even touching the throttle anymore. Yeah. So you may not need it. Right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Come on, Bob. I got three outs. <laughs> what are we even paying you for, Daniel? <laughs> so You're overpaying me. No. <laughs> All right. Let's see if anything else is hooked up. And there is. And no, there isn't. Now, if any of you guys has ever rebuilt a carburetor and you know what you are doing pretty much and it still didn't work exactly the way it should, more than likely it's the base plate. This has happened to me a few times, but the, the shaft that holds the throttle blades will wear this aluminum out and you'll get a lot of slap in it and it'll suck in air. So no matter what you have did to the carburetor, it'll still be trying to lean out. This one, as you can see, is really tight and rebuildable. Good. Yeah. That's good. Dirt dauber really worked hard to get inside this carburetor. Fuel jet looks clear. Clean, not clear. You can't see from here. <laughs> and that one looks good as well. Still get clean. All right, before I start pulling anything else apart on the carburetor, I better check and see what came in the kit. Because sometimes you do not get everything. I thought the fuel jets looked like a holly, which I bet they are, because if any of you guys are familiar with a holly, that is the power valve. I've never did this before on this carb. I have a, I have a lot of experience with different carbs, but I've never worked on this one. Looks like it's gonna be pretty easy. So if you guys are afraid to work on something that you guys don't have any experience with, just get in there and get your hands dirty. If someone else can do it, you can do it. And there is some differences right here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the hose that transfers the gas, the new one is larger. It's actually a high flow power valve. So that's some good news because that big old 351 can need all the fuel it can get. Now you want to be careful pulling these sprayers out 
because most of the time there will be emotion tubes inside of these. So if you pry on it, there's a good chance you might bend it. Yes. Oh, see? Emotion tubes. Okay, this is for the choke. One of the parts for the choke. And of course, it's vacuum operated. So there's like a rubber diaphragm in there. So if you're working on something like this, you'll, you might ask yourself, well, how do I know if this is good or bad? Well, having a rubber, a rubber diaphragm in there, it should seal if it's good. So I'll just close it off with my finger and you can see it's not moving. I release, it's good. So that's something that Greg doesn't have to uh, purchase. Now, I don't know if you guys can uh, notice this, but we got three different sizes of these, I'll call them hangers. The float, this attaches to where the, uh, the, the uh, seat goes in. If you guys can see here, there are different sizes, but with these, you would adjust your float level. So I'm gonna do some reading and see what our float level should be. So I'm not gonna put this, the, uh, the needle in there yet, because I wanna get the measurement first, because I'll probably have to pull it back out. This will just save a little bit of work. Okay, so it just drops down in there like so. And the way it looks, you'll just push this down and it should click, just like that. Okay, now we can get our measurement. You know what, we can't. You know why? Because I didn't put this in there. All right, I guess I'm gonna move on to the emulsion tubes and squirters. Well, it we, looks like we have to reuse this BB and this aluminum rod. They didn't give us one of those in the kit, which I don't see these being any wear parts. Oh, now I gotta line up that aluminum rod I just put in there so that it can go inside of this. Sometimes I think the torque converter transmission, something's going out. It only does it every once in a while. I think I just got a bad transmission leak, yeah. honestly. I got a new filter and stuff, but uh, so we'll see what she'll do. We'll take her out on the open road, baby. Yeah. She's smoking like a freight train. She's flooding. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. She 
she is flooding. Yeah, like a moat. What do you think it is? That's kind of how it did. And it was getting worse and worse. Yeah. You don't do much when you pull. Yeah. Or turn it around. Is there any other thing to tinker with on it? I'm trying to think of why it would be getting too much gas. They just started doing this? Yeah. Yeah. It just has no power either. It feels like and see it ain't smoking no more. It was only smoking right when we took off. It's random. It's like it smokes in the weirdest times. Huh. Uh, yeah, I don't that's to the floor. All the way here to the main. Yeah, it's just smoking. Breaking up. I'm thinking it's getting so much gas dumped into the cylinders right now. It's it's fouling the duck, it's making it miss spark. And it's, oh, yeah. That's why you're hearing it. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, and that's why it's been done the last, it's gotten worse over the last few days. To the floor again. It feels like a normal vehicle. Uh. All right, guys. So with the F100, we've come to determine why it's running just the same with the carb rebuilt daniel said the carburetor wasn't horrible on it but i did want to just go through it because i want it running as good as it can stock so we can really tell a comparable difference between the performance parts now um we took some brake cleaner while the truck was idling and sprayed around to see if there's a vacuum leak and turns out the intake gasket has slowly been deteriorating that's why over the last two three weeks it's been running rough and rougher and rougher with me uh, so that's what we've determined is the intake gasket is gone It does suck to put an intake gasket on it and then in a couple weeks pull that stock intake off and put an aluminum We're probably going to go with like a Wayland or something and we're going to go with a, either a Holly like 650 Or uh, we're in the talk with Holly right now. We may go with the EFI setup the sniper EFI It just depends on uh, what we work out with Holly because we'd love to throw some good holly parts on that. So in the upcoming videos, you'll see us fix the intake manifold gasket and then finally see what kind of power this truck made bone stock. Then after we do that, we can do the aluminum intake and four barrel. Then after that, uh, we'll do a cam and do a video on just a the cam. Then we'll move on to headers and a full exhaust. We'll be putting some flow masters on it. Some, uh, some probably some ceramic headers. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna go with. But uh, I will do all the exhaust myself on that truck. And so, yeah, a lot of good content coming out on this 79 for those that wanted to see it. We're going to be doing a full series on that truck. And you'll get to see it go from running good stock to wild. We're going to try to make this thing um, perform pretty well because I do want to daily drive this 79. So I do want the AC to work and all that stuff. So stay tuned for this, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the videos. We'll put any links to any parts we use uh, down below, of course. And... Uh, we will be turning this truck into like a street driven trophy truck. That's our goals with it since it's two wheel drive. Uh, we're not gonna do a four wheel drive swap or nothing. We'll just do some beefy suspension components, put the wider fenders and bedsides on it and give it that trophy truck look. We've seen this on Instagram and I fell in love with it. So props to whoever built this. We're gonna copy catch you just with different colors and change a few of the different things on it. But uh, yeah, it should be an awesome uh, video series. So thank you guys so much for watching and we love you guys and God bless. Oh,